r slash ask reddit what opinion of yours makes you an a-hole people in declining health old people need to retake driver's tests regularly it's ageism pure and simple an acquaintance of mine was hit and killed by person whose age had diminished his eyesight and cognitive function so much that the driver didn't even know he was driving unsafely i don't get why this isn't the case i got my license when i was 16 it says i have 20 stroke 20 vision and don't need glasses i am now 40 i have never had my eyes ray tested for driving and what about reflexes or awareness who votes most? Old people who wouldn't get voted back in? Someone who suggested this legislature read it. Guys I am not trying to say old people shouldn't be able to vote lol. Someone who serves in the military isn't automatically a hero or someone to be revered and looked up to. Bodjuk Horseman puts it best. Maybe some of the troops are heroes but not automatically. I'm sure a lot of the troops are jerks. Most people are jerks already. And it's not like giving a jerk a gun and telling him it's okay to kill people suddenly turns that jerk into a hero. Same applies to police officers. Family isn't nearly as important as people think it is. Don't ever let someone pressure you into something because they're family. If you want to cut them out of your life, go for it. I cut my mum out of my life nearly 10 years ago now and people are stud AI learned giving me their goddamn two cents on the matter. I'm in the same situation. I cut my mother out of my life a few years and everyone says I'll regret it but I regret all of the years of psychological abuse more. I want nothing to do with that lunatic. Babies and toddlers shouldn't be allowed to go to movie theaters after 7 o'clock pm edit. Added pm bc people thought I meant 7 years old and not I'm. Hey now. I only take my kid to children movies. Sometimes they're only played after 7. But I still see what you mean. My mum is currently trying to convince my husband and I to take our 3 year old to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Hell no. Not ruining somebody else's movie moment just because my mum thinks it's okay to do so. Ugh. You're a good egg. Assisted suicide for all and for all a good night. Got a ringing in your ears? Let the doctor permanently cure that bout of tinnitus for you. I unironically think death should be just another lifestyle choice. Look at all the billions we waste so old people can suffer a few additional months at the ends of their lives. That makes no sense to me. Cold as it sounds, you have a point. Of course they have a point. There's absolutely no sense in prolonging someone's life when they're in constant pain and suffering. Women should only be accepted into the fire brigade, military and police force etc if they can pass the same physical tests as the men have to. Female war veteran here who did pass the male standards. Commenting. A lot of female recruits arrive at boot camp never having built up basic cardio and strength before in their lives. What's worse, they think their problem is a lack of talent rather than a lack of training. The PT standards for military service are designed around what they can push the average teenager to pass in a couple of months. It's grueling for kids who've never left home before, yet really not that tough. As a woman in my 30s I completed the Navy PT run in the time for a 20 24 year old male and exceeded the push ups for a 17 19 year old male, not a humongous Amazon, but had hit the gym and been in shape. Had never been in organized sports back in school because, as a girl, nobody expected much. Which was bullshit. Not until leaving home and working a civilian job did I get the freedom and resources to work out properly. Then 9-11 happened and I had family in WTC. Joined the service later than most. Getting back into shape happens faster than getting into condition for the first time. Once you lift weights at the gym 3 or 4 times a week for a year. Then drift out of it. You can regain the muscle in 3 months that took 12 months to build in the first place. Boot camp lasts 2 to 3 months depending on the branch of service. So if you want females to pass the same PT standards as males I'm cool with that. Follow through, though, and stop raising girls with bullshit expectations. Prep them better before they arrive at basic training or else make basic training last longer. Because really, a mile and a half run is not that hard. Reminds me of a lady late 30s fitness blogger commenting on the high pull up test failure rate of women in the military. She basically said um. I never worked out until after I had kids. I worked really hard at doing pull ups. And now I can do pull ups. Don't know why they just let the women give up without working at it more. 
kids aren't bad kids. Parents are bad parents. A large majority of the time. And parents don't deserve a pat on the back just for giving birth to a human. And giving it clothes, food, and a place to live. Congratulations. You did the bare minimum. Were you expecting some kind of ducking participation award for keeping a human alive? A claps very slowly. Yes. I personally have met someone who acts like their child should know things by now. She publicly screams at her 2 years old like it's supposed to make things better. I stupidly gave it a go in friendship but after a full day of seeing a person I never want to be or associate myself with, I walked away. I can't believe people like that continue to have kids. 2. She's about to have her second. Somehow it makes her an awesome mom even though she can't even handle one. She's a stay at home mom for duck's sake. Most children are annoying. All children are annoying some of the time. And some children are annoying all of the time. And most are not cute. I don't want to see your newborn baby's pictures. He looks like a purple alien. If you want the good answers, switch it to controversial and have fun. I'm a Muslim and I hate when other Muslims go to someone else's country and try to make it into a Muslim country. The only reason I left Muslim countries is because of how ducked up it is. That's why now I follow the rules of the country I'm in and go against those who want to implant Sharia law. Duck that law. Good on you. As a Canadian I'm with you 100%. I'm a liberal Albertan. I registered my home to take in Syrian immigrants. Never happened. And 99% of Muslims I've met are so incredibly nice. But if you want to change my culture or force your religion or think less of women, then stay put. Ducking preach dude. I'm in Canada and they're trying to ban sex ed from being taught in schools cause it's against their religion. That's as if I went to your house and told you that you should change the curtains. Infuriating. Having kids shouldn't be a right but a privilege. Some people should not have kids. I agree. But it's impossible to enforce without quickly degrading into a corrupt tyranny. People with anime avatars are inferior human beings. What if the person is an anime character? Yep, yeah, man. It's a selfie. I can't help it. Cries in senpai edit. HTTP. I. Imga. Com slash 22Bs8FV. GIF HTTP. I. Imga. Com TN4KLL6. GIF. If I knew my child was going to be retarded I would want to abort it. A neighbor got divorced so they could have time away from the child each week. They couldn't handle it 24-7 and it ruined their family. Husband said it himself to my dad. If a child to be is never going to have a fair shot at living a full, unrestricted life. To be free from severe defects and to have every opportunity they should. And we know that that's probably going to be the case. In my opinion. It makes someone an a-hole to say that we shouldn't do anything about that. Too many people use mental illness as a crutch for bad or lazy behavior. This makes it harder for people who have real mental illness to get help. But anyone who questions anything, or even believes that we should have limits concerning what we do for, or consider, mental illness, is an a-hole. My co-worker claims she has mental problems and I'm crazy I am. To a degree, I agree. But not to the extent which she makes out. To yardstick this. Years ago I worked in a bar. One of my co-workers on the holiday period was a psychiatric nurse getting extra cash. Some loudmouthed twat was gobbing off about how he had mental problems. I'm crazy me and all that crap. Heather, the nurse, turns to me and says I hate dongheads like him. Of all the people in here, he's the least of the problems. The one over there. She's the one that mental and points at a woman drinking alone. Tipsy, flirtatious and slightly askew but normal. She was fairly regular. Face seen around town. Never wasted. Dressed well. Pretty much always polite. Sometimes an off comment that raised a question but not much more. I asked her why and she details bits of her nurse life. Snippets of the social worker's file written about that woman and what real sick, twisted stuff she'd done. Heather then tells me that they are expecting to get the sign off for full committal to the psychiatric hospital the next week. Heather would be the one signing off the paperwork and doing the doorstep knocking. Week later, I'm on shift with Heather again, and ask how it went. She never got that far. The woman had an argument with her boyfriend and assaulted him. Slashing his face with a knife and going completely batshit crazy with a full police squad restraining her. 
Heather was called urgently to the police station to speed track the mental health paperwork to protect the officers. Ever since then, anyone who cries look at me. I'm standing on one leg. I'm crazy. I think of as attention seeking. Those truly mentally disturbed don't show it that way. Good points. But I'm baffled that a nurse would break that woman's right to confidentiality like that. She could lose her license. This is an a-hole opinion because I know and love many conservative people. I would never say it in real life. Politically conservative people lack empathy because they are too narrow-minded to think outside of anything they can physically touch. They would give a sandwich to a homeless person on the street while simultaneously thinking all other homeless people are parasites. The racist ones can generally be fantastic friends to black co-workers and neighbors while simultaneously thinking all other black people are criminals and drug dealers. There is a fundamental disconnect in their brain between empathy for the individual and empathy for larger groups. I don't think the a-hole part is your opinion, but rather your belief that most all conservatives are the same. The same goes for liberals too. Sick. Plenty of liberals I know claim to be so accepting of everyone and yet when it really comes down to it I watch them feel uncomfortable around me and my friends in certain situations. We are almost all Arab and all black. But it's not all liberals or even most. And it's not all conservatives or even most. Trans people are mentally ill. I understand not being happy with the body you're born in. But when it gets to the point where you're getting hormone therapy and prepping to have your genitals turned inside out, that's gone too far. It's like these people refuse to accept and come to terms with the fact that you don't get to be happy with everything about yourself. No one is. I'd like to be taller. I'm not going to go to the doctor's office and see if I can talk him into getting me on the track to have my legs broken and stretched like someone with dwarfism might have done just so I can be a bit closer to average height. Any doctor would look at me like I'm crazy, but if I came in and told him I feel like a woman trapped in a man's body, that I want a bottle of estrogen pills and some information on having my penis turned inside out, that's okay somehow, edit, just to clarify for every person who's mentioned it, I don't hate trans people, I don't care what they do, I have no interest in regulating or stopping them, I'm not going to shun someone just because I find out they're trans. It literally does not matter to me in any way, shape, or form. If they feel that transitional surgery is the answer, then I support their right to do that. I simply don't agree that it's the right choice. I think it shows problems with our mental health care and our society as a whole that we even consider such an extreme course of action as a solution, let alone the most viable one. Well see, it actually is a disorder but not in the way you describe. There are studies and scans showing that a trans person has brain chemistry and composition of the gender they identify with. I am happy with who I am. A transgender man. I was never happy before I began living as a guy. I was depressed and anxious and hated everything about myself. I had no personality and couldn't form meaningful relationships with anyone. Since coming out I have been happier and healthier. I can connect with people and feel emotions in a way I never let myself before and I have interests, hobbies, motivation, and a personality which are all things that I didn't have before because I was so emotionally detached. With everything I do to further my transition I become happier and healthier. I am more confident and can actually see myself living to be an old man when I was sure before coming out that I would become suicidal before ever living to be an old woman. I don't really care if people think that being trans is a mental illness. The cure is transitioning. At least for me anyways. The developmentally disabled shouldn't be praised or given special opportunities just because of their disability. My brother and my sister both have development disabilities. I've seen and felt both sides of the argument. A lot of this has to do with the culture from even before our times. People like my brother and sister were shoved out of society, ridiculed, mocked, taken advantage of, jailed, locked away in asylums, and given some of the coldest treatment a human could get. The culture today, while not perfect, is much warmer and welcoming because there are brave men and women who haven't let their troubles and disabilities break their spirit, as well as the kind of people who have helped open the doors for them. 50 years ago, my sister would either be in an asylum or treated like my great aunt Dorothy and be a family burden and outsider. Today, she works in a gym, organizes the buddy program and special olympics program at our former high school, coaches spec olympic cheerleading, 
and runs half marathons. There are some people who take that too far though and praise them beyond belief because it makes them feel better about themselves. Sometimes my sister is someone else's ego masturbation for their kindness and charity boner and they pat themselves so hard on the back they fall over. Times like those, it's heartbreaking to see her realize that. There were occasions where people she thought were friends couldn't wait to leave her ASAP and a hug goodbye is the worst inconvenience to them. You could see their annoyance written all over their faces. So yes, it's a bit much at times. A lot of it is very deserved though. But the crap these people go through every day of their entire lives is unbelievable. I don't mind letting them have their fun. Add that in with the difference 50 years makes in the Special Olympics slogan let me win. But if I cannot win let me be brave and the attempt starts to ring more true. She gets on my nerves more often than not. But I'm incredibly proud of my sister and maybe one day I'll be capable of joining her on a half marathon. On the other hand, my brother works at Walmart and plays Pokemon and Pokemon Go too much. That isn't very praiseworthy, but I'm proud he finally got the job. Euthanasia should be legal everywhere. Soon as a person's quality of life has declined they should have that option. I would consider this makes me an a-hole as I know many people who couldn't face it. But my gran is in the very late stages of Alzheimer's and I wish we'd sent her off ages ago. She's not the gran I knew when I was younger. Why do I want these final days to be my last memories of her? I barely want to see her anymore cause it's just depressing for everyone involved. It would release the whole family of a burden we have hanging over us. Constant care and lots of money poured into someone who doesn't know what day it is. And lies there in her bed like a drawger from Skyrim. It's not fair on anyone involved and I strongly consider it to be the best thing to do. It would also allow my granddad to get out and about a bit more. He's miserable right now cause of the heartbreak he's facing. He can't get out cause he can't leave her. Even though she sleeps for days on end. It's just that constant risk. It really sucks. And dare I say everything would be far easier if my gran had just been safely, quietly and peacefully euthanized in her home about a year ago. But you've just got to deal with it and try not to think about this kind of thing. Engagement rings are a stupid waste money and should be phased out. Take care of yourself first, by that I mean. You can't help anyone while struggling and worrying about your income or personal issues if you do help them. They'd sink you. I would never shame someone for having to go to work or school or whatever before helping me. I understand they don't prioritize it over me but they can't hold their life to immediately help me. You simultaneously duck yourself over trying to help someone. And it helps neither. I work hard so I never have to ask for a favor or be stuck in a situation where I can't help someone family because I'm in shit. 2. I don't want to be helpless in any situation. I try to always be on top of things to be ready for anything. Plan A. Plan B and room for error. But when I explain that to someone their immediate response or understanding is I'm being a selfish a-hole. It's not like I deny anyone. I just make sure I'm well enough to help first. Trump supporters are destroying America and running the country into the ground with their selfish and backwards beliefs. More people need to die. Less people need to be born. As well. Athletes are not more important than you or me. They just get paid a shit ton more. According to Reddit, 99, 99% of them. Eugenics isn't a bad idea, if you are a carrier for a genetic disorder. You should seriously consider whether you should reproduce. Huntington's, muscular dystrophy, ETC, are some of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. No one should live that life. I'm not saying murder everyone who isn't Aryan. But I am saying that genetic counseling should be mandatory. Not just anyone should have a pet. They cost money. You need to invest time. It's a commitment. You might have a lot of love to give, but maybe it's not enough. If you can't afford an animal, don't get one. Unfortunately, I see them thrown away. Like the puppy dying of Pavo put into a box and left in the alleyway. Sorry, kiddo. We tried. Or the Saint Bernard who weighed 67 from neglect. She is now doing great. She just needed groceries. Or the puppy slammed to the ground by the owner who died of head trauma after the entrained pup nipped. Owner charged with felony cruelty. I think breeding dogs so they are purebred is stupid and in some cases very cruel. 
purebreds have a higher chance of getting genetic disorders. So when people breed dogs to get that perfect corgi lab bulldog whatever, you can cause them a lot pain and a shorter lifespan. I thought Hayden Christensen was fantastic as Anakin. Edit, I have to plug shattered glass. I saw it on a flight and forgot I was flying for an hour and a half. I live in a great city, but it has a significant homeless issue. Now I know a certain portion are good people and all. But if you are one of those piece of shit junkies that use and just drop use dirty needles wherever you go, I would like to dispose of you myself. Have some consideration for pets and children at least. Shit, quit ducking up where we live, a-holes. I hate people that think they're holier than thou because they have kids. Every single post on social media is about their kid. Every conversation is about their kid. Any two idiots can make a baby. Get over yourself. People who receive food stamps should not be smokers or drinkers. If they can afford to buy tobacco or alcohol, they can afford to pay for their own food. People who are too poor to have kids shouldn't be having kids. I cannot stand people who believe that they deserve unconditional respect because they are older, or in charge, especially with teachers, etc. I will respect everyone to begin with but they will have to prove that they deserve that respect. But if you think that you are more important just because of a title, job, number etc, I will no longer respect you. Simple. Alright. Vent finished. Emo Caitlyn Jenner isn't a true hero, a wealthy, sheltered, and privileged person that has not endured even a tenth of what many transgender people have to endure in their daily lives coming out as transgender does not make anybody heroic or brave. Most people shouldn't have children. Poor people shouldn't reproduce. Children still sitting in booster seats should not be allowed in a restaurant past 630. If you're receiving government assistance and you reproduce, you're on your own. Fat people should pay more for healthcare and health insurance. Same with smokers. Same with chronic alcohol users. Insurance companies should feel free to deny people coverage. A single payer system, however, should not. If you're fat, I'm going to assume you're lazy, dumb and probably lack drive, focus and intestinal fortitude. Edit, if I respond to your comment I'm not trying to pick a fight. I just find discussion about these points enjoyable and, if anything, discussion helps me understand my biases. Finally, an opinion in this thread that actually does make OP an a-hole. Guns should be illegal. Modern feminism is cancer. Feminism is just a way for women to get all the benefits men get without the consequences. College degrees are nothing but a piece of paper that says you can follow directions. I've gotten so disenfranchised with it all. A girl in my communications class got a solid grade on a presentation that she couldn't ducking read. She worked really hard on it and has had a rough life living in a poor neighborhood. I want to help her out and help her work on her reading. But at the same time, how do you go through 3 years of college 50% illiterate? My a-hole opinion is that blaming white people for being racist isn't going to solve the issues with race. If we want to solve this problem we have unify people not tell them that they are the sole problem. Statements like white privilege I think are part of the problem because I think that white privileges should be considered rights and rights should be given freely to everyone regardless of their color or ethnicity. It's not the government's job to support your lazy ass. We need to carpet bomb parts the Middle East back to the Stone Age. Edit. Please read the original thread title. I propose we elect you to the position of secretary of communicating to innocent civilians in person that they're going to be carpet bombed because you are uncomfortable with the idea of brown people. I propose we elect you to the position of secretary of attacking straw man his opinion is silly but so was this rebuttal. Fat shaming is a good thing. It isn't. Most fat people lack the willpower to get better. Fat shaming just makes them feel like shit and look for an outlet to feel better. Which is food. Which makes their situation worse. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.